Hello, Dr. David Hornbrook again for our weekly podcast on Dental Up. I hope you've enjoyed the ones in the past. Uh, you're in for a real treat today. We have a special guest, good friend of mine. We've, we've known each other a long time. Many years. Dr. Ron Kaminer. And, and Ron, you you're, you live in Long Island. I do. And is that where you're born and raised? I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Everybody's originally from Brooklyn, except for you, probably. I'm from San Diego. I'm a SoCal boy. Yeah, there you go. So it's close. Uh, I live in Long Island now, two offices on Long Island, and okay. then practice full time. Okay. And you went to school in Buffalo? Went to Soon. school at the University of Buffalo. Yeah, couldn't, can't get much colder than you It's pretty darn cold. Buffalo. That's we, we lost some snow days, but good school. Still yeah. a good school. Well, I, I appreciate you being out here. We're in Irvine, as most of you know, and uh, it's absolutely beautiful weather today. We had a heat a heat wave last week. It, it actually got into the high 90s, which we hardly ever get. So this is like San Diego weather. Low Would, humidity. Wouldn't know it from today because it's beautiful today. Yeah, it's, what's and the weather like in New I York? left at, I got on, a, on, on the plane this morning. It was 8 a.m. It was 93 and muggy, about 98% humidity. Yeah. We, we, we don't do that. Yeah, it's, it was brutal. Yeah. Do you have bugs? You have mosquitoes uh, too? We have mosquitoes and yeah. all that kind of good stuff. They're expecting some big rains today and tomorrow. Oh, really? Okay. Well, welcome to uh, Southern California for the Love next it. four days. We're here for the, uh, actually I'm going to be part of it, the KOL, which is uh, Key Opinion Leaders, and Ron is one for current, so we're going to spend the weekend in, in Newport Beach, and we're going to have a great time. That's always a lot of fun. It's, it's always a good time. So let's talk about some of the things you're doing. You know, I've, I've followed your career and, you know, through our friendship as well as watching what you're doing, and you have a practice, two practices, and you're still practicing full, full time? Full time, yeah. Okay, so you're doing the dentistry that you're talking about, because I know that, that you're talking about uh, certainly lasers, I mean, that's a specialty, and I want to talk about where you think that's going. Um, technology, aesthetic dentistry, I mean, so I mean, you're keeping up on everything I know, which is awesome. Trying to stay on the cutting edge while maintaining a very diversified practice. Yeah. So it's, it's fun. Yeah, and that gives you credibility. You know, because so, I, you know, I, I practice too full time and, and, you know, one of the first things I say to the audience, I do what you do for a living. And so, you know, we talked about intro scanners and, and you bought one. You know, people aren't throwing stuff at you and, and no you make question. an opinion. You've got to make a decision. When are you going to get into technology? When you use a new lab? Uh, you know, what decisions you make, right? And so you, you can totally relate to your audience, the people that are listening to No me. question. You know what? And, when, and I tell them that. I'm sure you do too. And I tell them that when I'm out there and I say, I do what you do every single day when I'm not out here speaking to you. So yeah. if you ask me what happens on the distal of 31 when I'm working with my laser, I can answer it because I yeah. do it day in and day out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. So what changed? You know, you, You've been practicing how long? 23 years. Okay. So similar about what I've been practicing. So the changes we've seen has been astronomical in the last three or four years. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, we, we talked earlier is at Keating, we're very digital and CAD cam oriented. And um, so he was asking about digital cameras and modelists. And you said you're doing a lot of modelists. Yeah. Most of my single units today are modelists. We're scanning with the Trios 3 shape mm -hmm. scanner, which I think anyone would say today is the, the Jaguar of, yeah, absolutely. Uh, of, of scanners. And uh, get really accurate, getting really, really nice results. Of course, it's dependent on your on your design, so to speak. Right. But um, it makes get the it, getting the idea of getting crown in a box is something that a lot of people have to start getting used to because that's yeah. the way it's going. Oh yeah, and and you know I think you know you asked earlier was as, as we walked through the model room and we see all these models and it's like really people are using models and you know I always say it's because of people it's because of dentists the dentists that like to do this on off on off or they want to look at their preps. Right, and, and that's the only reason we really need models, especially right. with single well, units. Well, you know what, and, and that's that's an interesting point. So here, here's something that I've started talking about a little bit and I think is really just interesting. I believe that scanners are gonna make dentists better practitioners, and, mm -hmm. and here's here's my, my philosophy. When you look at something up on a 20-something on a inch monitor and you're seeing your prep, and you don't like that finish line, well, you can go back and you do it. There's a very different mental philosophy and a, and a mental understanding that the dentists go through when they look at the negative and look at the impression and they're like, oh, the lab will figure it out. Oh, yeah. So so I think that what the labs are going to find that are digital scans, the preps are going to be way better than what they've gotten uh, impressions throughout the years. That's yeah. that's It's curious to see what happens. Well, we see that now. Okay. Right, because, and, and we've done this as practitioners, you, you, you know, you look at the impression and say, that looks great, and then lab calls you five days later and says, I can't see anything. Correct. And then we wonder, how did the lab screw that up? <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's us that screwed it and, up. And right? I think many labs will even say that somewhere around 50 plus percent of their impressions have some imperfection mm -hmm. in it. So I think the, the scan is going to totally change that yeah. now. And it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting to see. Yeah. And you, you made a good point. You said in your program, you show a slide of the, the lab technician of 20 years ago, which would have been 
the, the German technician with the loops, uh, applying porcelain, and today it's the young guy with the headphones on who's uh, designing crowns. And once yeah. he's taught design and does it well, uh, the computer does the rest of it for you, and the mill does does everything else. Yeah, that's right. Especially with the libraries, they can pull that in. And you know, if they're artistic at all, you know, I always tell people that, you know, young men and women come in here and say, you know, I, I'm looking for a job, and we say, do you know anything about ceramics or dentistry or por No, nothing. Shoot. Do you play Xbox? Are you kidding? I'm level 400 <laughs> on, on Call of Duty. You're so, hired. You're hired. That's yes. it. Done. You're in our CAD CAM department. That's no question. So, you know, digital digital impression, I'm, I'm so with you. I, I purchased di a different digital impression scanner because I couldn't afford the trios. Um, but I, I totally agree with you on that. And, and uh, it's exciting. It, it is. And that playing field is going to change dramatically, too. It's expected by, by the end of the year that two new companies are going to be heading into the U.S. market. Uh, dental Wings and Canary, which mm -hmm. should be two low-priced or moderately priced dental scanners. Uh, I saw them in Europe at the IDS Dental Show and uh, small cameras, really, really quick. Mm -hmm. It's going to change. This is where it's going. And I swore five years ago I'd never scan. Yeah. And now I say to myself, I wish I would have scanned five years earlier. But yeah. So it's pretty interesting. Oh, yeah. It is. It is very cool. And I think the people that haven't embraced that they don't really know what they're missing because they're looking at the Serac of 10 years ago that was big, bulky, not very accurate, time-consuming, lots of power, and it's, it's exciting. No, no question. Yeah. So let's talk about lasers because I know you're a huge laser advocate, both hard and soft tissue. Yeah, it's been my baby for 20-something years, since dental yeah. school, actually. Oh, really? So tell us about that journey. So this is an interesting story. Uh, very few people know this, so I'm going to put this on the podcast. Uh -oh. When I was in dental school, a sophomore dental student um, I was taking Technique Lab, Crown and Bridge Technique Lab at the University of Buffalo, and you needed X number of points in your practicals in order to pass, and I got into a tiff with one of the Crown and Bridge instructors, and he just had a bug for me the whole year, and the rule at the University of Buffalo was that if you flunk, flunk Technique Crown and Bridge Lab, you had to repeat the entire year no matter what your grades were. Really? Interesting. <laughs> well, nine practicals later, I'm like, fine, but... I could have not done well on the final practical. And this guy gets a hold of my last practical and literally gives me a zero on it, or somewhere near a zero. Right. Enough to fail me out of 800 points, fails me by about seven points. Well, I contended with the school and they told me, tough luck, you know, take a hike. And, um, but they did allow me, because I had A's and everything else, A's and B's, everything else, to do a hybrid junior year. So I did five years in dental school. My okay. junior year was repeating the Crown and Bridge Technique Lab, but progressing in all my other courses because it was, it was foolish right. for me to take them again. Well, when that happened, there was an instructor in the oral surgery department, and this guy changed my whole life. His name was Chuck Lebo. He said to me, I had all this extra time on my hand because the timing of the classes didn't work out. Right. So I had an hour here and two hours there, and he said to me, why don't you come do some research? Um, we're doing carbon dioxide laser, laser research yeah, okay. in, our, in our laser labs. I'm like, I don't know anything about lasers. He goes, you'll learn. Yeah. Well, we started doing hamster research and at the time with, with cheek cancers and things like that. Fast forward two years later as a senior, I presented my research at the ADA meeting in Hawaii. I presented it at the Academy of Laser Surgery and Medicine meeting, a medical meeting in front of 300 physicians. Awesome. So this guy who flunked me probably changed my whole life because then I got, out of, I got out of school and I was a laser guy from the beginning and had one of the first 100 hard tissue lasers in the country. That was when BioLays was doing their thing way right. back when. And, <clears throat> Ended up started BioLase's first training program, and still today probably have trained more heart tissue laser owners than almost anybody around, and then taught for Fotona, and uh, now, of course, um, I know a lot about lasers, and I work with our mutual friend, Alan yeah, Miller. Right. From, who he interviewed on podcast a couple, a couple months ago. Who's changed the face of soft tissue oh, yeah. lasers five, six years ago, uh, and in our office today, we use heart and soft tissue lasers all day long. Yeah. So it's been a fun journey. Oh, yeah, that's all. I didn't know that. That's a good yeah, story. That is a good story. I like that. So if you if you had had a good crown and bridge instructor, you would have I might have not. I might have not been in the same place, and yeah. that's really true. That's yeah, pretty it's, crazy. It's amazing how thing, little things like that change our life, right? Personal or right instance of time will change our lives. So where do you think? You know, I, I know there's our, a lot of our listeners. You know, the diode, the soft tissue, and you're right. Alan Miller, AMD with Picasso, all of a sudden made everything affordable. No question. You, you know, I, I got trained by Don Calusi, who, who you know, and. Um, in 1995, and the soft tissue was $49,000, and everyone says, oh, lots of things are $49,000. Not 1995. I mean, it, the CEREC was $29,000. Right. This is the most expensive thing I had in my office. And you know, now we're looking at, at diodes that are under $3,000 that are portable, disposable tips. I mean, you know all this stuff. Where, where do you think? So I, I would assume that many of our listeners and viewers, you know, they're familiar with the diode. Maybe they bought it, maybe they haven't, but they, they know about it, right? 
they don't know about what else is going on with laser dentistry, whether it's hard tissue, whether you think in the near future with your knowledge, are we, is the handpiece going to be something that is going to fade away like an impression material? Yeah, you know, I, I don't see that happening because still preparations of crowns can be done with a hard tissue laser, but it's still cumbersome. Um, but I think what we're seeing is the hard tissue laser was always this big box. Right. Now they're getting smaller and smaller. I expect by the end of the year, um, a company or two to bring uh, out a hard tissue laser that should be very low profile, probably less costly than what's out there today. Uh, you know, lasers today, they can rival the speed of high, high speed hand pieces for operative dentistry, especially if you're anesthetizing. One of the beauty of hard tissue lasers has been is you can get a lot of minimally invasive type early class two preparations, class threes, and get them done without anesthetic. And that still can be done today. Uh, so they've really advanced dramatically. And a lot of people have poo-pooed them and say, well, they don't work. And I'm sure like anything else, whether it's soft tissue or hard tissue, it's all about training. You have to, you don't buy an airplane and then don't learn how to fly it. Right. But once you're trained on these things, you know, Fotona has done a great job right now with their hard tissue laser. They, and that's the light walker? That's the light walker. Okay. And they, they've, they have some unbelievable adjunctive techniques now doing uh, a, a procedure called snorlase where they're treating the soft palate oh, with really? pulses of laser tissue to shrink the palate to minimize or eliminate snoring. Really? And I think with the um, what's going on now with sleep and sleep dentistry, mm -hmm. that's gonna come into play and that's gonna be, and they, they have a patented procedure I believe with that. They're also doing, uh, with that same laser, they're doing um, warming of the, of the inner tissue, the, the lip tissue, and be able to smooth out some wrinkle lines from the outside just by warming the inside. Really? Yeah, so they're doing a lot of cool things out there with, with adjunctive procedures for dentists, and that's what's making it so so exciting. Are you, are you doing the Snorlax? Um, I've, I've, done, done I've done a few cases okay. of them, um, and you know, it's all about case selection. All right. It's all about who's snoring, and, and the interesting thing about that, the way they came up with this technique to that this was going to work was uh, a surgeon out in, I believe it was in Italy, he started using the same light work or laser in medicine um, for vaginoplasty. So what he found was shrinking vaginal tissue yeah, okay. substantially. Vaginal tissue, oral tissue, very, very similar. And they said, okay, if we do this, why can't we try it in the mouth? Right. And literally, they started trying it in the mouth, and they saw these dramatic results where, right. where airways were being opened up. So um, usually three sessions, about 20 minutes each, 30 minutes each, and, and most patients uh, report a 60 to 90% improvement after the second session. Wow. So it's pretty wild. There's some cool things going on besides hard tissue, but hard tissue is still bread and butter for most people, and yeah. uh, lasers do work well for that. Oh, good. So, you know, where do you think we're going to be in two or, th or let's say five years? You know, I have a Versal Wave, which you know Hoya is out of the dental business, right. and and you know you look at these lasers are still sixty five to a hundred thousand dollars for hard tissue, um, and they're big, and they're no still question. the way they are now. Or the, whether it be the what, the I plus now is that is that. Water laser's new one? Is Water laser's new one, correct. Okay. Zai Plus and Solea's got a, a uh, hard tissue cutting CO2 that, that they're selling with training for about 115 grand. Mm -hmm. um, and I, then the Light Walkers. And the Light Walkers, which are selling about 70 or 70, so. Okay. And you know what? But, but at least with the Light Walker, they've been able to justify enough treatment procedures other than hard tissue okay. that maybe it can be justified, especially in a group practice. I think in a group practice, um, it's almost a no-brainer because there's so many people can do different things in a group right. practice. Um, what I do see coming is low-profile hard tissue lasers, maybe by year's end, a laser that's less than 40000 uh, bucks, possibly, um, and ultimately a box that you can press multiple, no multiple buttons to get different wavelengths. So right now you have... Um, you might have uh, an Erbium and an ND YAG in one, but ultimately you're going to have an Erbium ND diode and a CO2 in one, and just pressing the laser source coming emitting out of one handpiece. I believe that's going to be not too far down yeah. the road. And you're right, and that, that would make it all of a sudden affordable. If I can do it with different procedures, or if, if you had a surgeon down the hallway even, right? That, that no question. Somehow you can make this affordable. Well, that's awesome. So lasers, digital scanners. Carries detection devices. Yeah, let's talk about that. Carrier detection devices are really starting to turn the corner a little bit. So if you look back, let's say 10 years ago, and you thought of what are the three big pieces of technology that affect people's practice? You'd probably have to say CEREC, right? You might say Diagnodent, because that, right. oh, yeah. that, that was, that was the, the, the bare bone type thing. Um, you know, and maybe digital radiography or one. Right. I mean, those are really you know, the kickers. I mean, today you look at, there's five or six different carries detection type devices all working with fluorescence 
that are starting to change the playing field a little bit. Yeah, you name know, name a few. So so Air Techniques has one called Spectra. Spectra works um, through a fluorescent. Uh, it's a camera that works with fluorescence. It has um, blue violet LED, LED type uh, lights in there. And what it does is it picks up the metabolites of karyogenic bacteria on the occlusal surface. And when the light hits it, those will fluoresce red while the tooth fluoresces green. So you have this digital picture of the tooth up on the screen. So now uh, you put a 40 inch monitor in the operatory and you tell the patient you're gonna do a cavity detecting exam and you go through this camera and it's picking up these areas. These are areas that uh, you won't see with an explorer. I mean, we know the explorers are not all that accurate right. to begin with, yet we use them as our, yeah. our, our day-to-day -day, uh, <laughs> diagnostic tool. Um, so that's one, one device. And what AirTech has done very interesting is they've created this um, scale, so to speak. So uh, just pressing a button on the camera, and it looks like an intraoral camera, it'll superimpose a scale on that, uh, on that red, red reading. So imagine the occlusal of a molar, and if it's all carious, it'll show up red. You press another button, and now there are little numbers that show up, and they, and they uh, quantitate with the approximate location in, in where, the, where the decay is in the tooth. So early enamel, deep enamel, early dent, and deep oh, dent. Oh, really? So taking this a step further, manufacturers are coming out with clear sealant materials. So now if you have something that has very early enamel decay, you might use one of the remineralization agents that we have out there today, and we're getting ahead a little bit, but right. um, MI Paste from GC America or Remin Pro from Voco, put a little bit in the groove, put a clear sealant on it, and these devices can fluoresce through the clear sealant. So you can save the digital image in the patient's file, go back four months later. Oh, and see. And see oh, if wow. you're, so I always say, if it was your daughter, you know, what would you do? Would you, would you take your bird with? I never say husband or wife because you don't know the answer you're going to get, right? <laughs> so I always say daughter. So because what's the worst that's going to happen? You open it up anyway, and it's, and it's still going to be early right. on. So AirTech has one of them. Acteon has one called uh, SoproCare, and SoproCare allows you to uh, allows you to pick up not only decay, but it also picks up um, new plaque and old plaque, so it differentiates oh, really? new plaque by coloration. So new plaque shows up pink, and old plaque shows up yellow. How old um, is old plaque? Uh, what, what, what's the dividing line plaque. between? I guess it's new mature and... plaque. So the patient tells you, Doc, I brushed my teeth. You put the camera on there, and this yellow stuff is all over the place. You say, Listen, you might have brushed it today, but you didn't brush it for the last six <laughs> months because the yellow is old stuff and it's been sitting uh, okay. there. So that's another one. Um, Cavo's Carry View now is out right. there, which is really neat. And that's a whole different level. They use this transillumination, and we can right. see through an approximals there, which I see as a big asset for pediatric dentistry, for right. parents who don't want you to take x-rays on the kids. Mm -hmm. It also pick up um, fractures as well. So that's a whole nother di different level of technology. Mm -hmm. And then the one we don't see yet, but it's coming down the road, is a company called S-Ray out of Oregon, and they're gonna use ultrasound to pick up the case. So that's yeah, okay. gonna hold, take the level of x-rays and, and really just bring it down to a very minimal level right. in the dental office. So that's yeah, kind of cool. That's awesome. And I think most people don't know about it. A few of those I've heard about it and some of them I haven't. And, you know, it's interesting you mentioned about how, how literally you could put a clear sealant, let's say you put something like GI paste, which I use in my practice, and, or MI paste, <clears throat> and then you put a sealant on, and, and I could say, okay, you're at, at I, don't, I don't know the numbers, but let's say 70, right? And that's not great, but it's not the end of the world. Right. And we'll see in six months, and you're at 30, we can quantify that based on no question. Previous. And You know, it's, I think that's something that we don't do, right? I mean, you're a practicing clinician, you know, you come in, you've got a little wear on a canine, and Two years later, you say, you know, that's that, that's you got somewhere in the game. We don't really know the difference because no we question. don't we don't hold on to all that stuff. No and, and also, don't forget, we're, we we live in an intervention. We are intervention practitioners, right? We make a living out of drilling teeth. So the oh, whole yeah. philosophy of remineralizing and not picking up a burr is a whole different oh, yeah. aspect. Yeah, a friend of mine, uh, you know, he, he, talking about an explorer. A friend of mine's son, when he was little, he, he, this friend of mine's a dentist, and he said, Dad, you, you know, you call that explorer and and. Uh, Mark said, yeah, that's exploring. He says, what do you do with that? He goes, well, I look for bad stuff. And he's and a, a kid that's going and learning about world history, you know, with, with Columbus, he says, Dad, how come every other explorer is looking for good and new stuff and you're looking for yeah. bad stuff? I'm going to use that. And, and I thought, you know what? We, I never thought, I would, I've never heard that before. It has, it's a little kid that, that brings that up. That's great. Is, I'm going to use that. I think awesome. that's good. Yeah, I think you should. It was actually, you know, Mark Montgomery. Yeah, sure. It was actually one of his sons. That's and, great. And I thought that was cool. So carries the One thing about this um, quantifying and being able to measure in the future, you know, I don't know if you've seen some of the stuff that 3M is going to get in the future would be that you could take a trio scan, full art scan. It goes into to a database. That patient moves to San Diego, and part of my initial exam, I scan it, I can pull you from a database, and it'll show all the, how the teeth were different on my scan 
versus your skin, wear and loss of occlusal cuts. That's, that's and so it, the problem with that right now is, you know, 3M says, yeah, that'd be awesome, except for not everyone has a 3M scanner. And trios may or not say, oh, we're going to join the database or no not. And so that may be the problem. But wouldn't it be cool if, I mean, literally, whether it's in your own practice, being able to take, just like an oral cancer exam, every year taking and say, you know what, there's a lot more wear than should be. And this is the time we get into a night guard or restorative or equilibration or whatever we decide to do. No question. It, it, progression and monitoring, I think, is definitely something on the forefront that we're going to be able to let me press a button and get this uh, visual image of that patient's record, what it was. And yeah. that, that's, going, that's going to happen very yeah. shortly, I think. Because we don't do that. You know, orthodontists maybe do it. Up to seven years, they throw away the models. And right. we'd have too no many question. models, right? No I mean, how many times have you had a patient say, does this face look like it's getting bigger to you? It's like, how the hell would I know? Right. <laughs> Is it? You know? No but, question. you know, I think that's whether it be digital photography or, or digital x-rays, whatever we can, we can catalog and hold on to it without having a bunch of cupboards full of boxes. Well, and, and that's something that's interesting because I think what has to change in our profession is right now the operatory itself because our operatories are not built for the technology that we no. have right now. So we have cords and cables and things like that and I think I think one of the biggest changes we're going to see in the next five to ten years is equipment manufacturers just redesigning the operatory, um, creating space for all these type of caries detections and lasers and so that you don't have a million cords you know hanging around all over the place and and then of course it's dental ergonomics how many monitors is necessary in the operatory where do you position the monitors it's not good enough to have one anymore uh, you know you, I think you need we have two but ideally I think you need three in every operatory you need one for you on the opposite wall when you're scanning the patient or doing right. your caries exams one for the patient to watch a TV and a computer monitor right. that's the ideal um, operatory of the future so right. that's got to change I think dramatically as well yeah and that's I, that's something we talked about last year at this event where these plug and play imagine buying a chair that had one foot pedal and you could plug in your caries detector you plug in your trios camera you could put and it and you push a button and that foot pedal now works for all those things because I mean we all have I mean, look over there I have three foot pedals right. I hide two of them but they're over there right no question and we need we need to be it would seem like it's not that hard too but obviously with different manufacturers and different technologies um, as the world goes totally Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, I think we'll see that totally change. Yeah, but it's like anything. The, the, the iPhone won't let you plug in their Samsung USB That's or the, no you know, the Apple Air. And so, you know, it's these, these manufacturers saying, I don't want you to buy a, a camera from Pelton Crane to put on my, uh, not get, letting my go the baby. chair. It's no just question. not going to happen. All right, so you practice restorative dentistry, and I imagine it's mostly probably a crown and to probably yeah. adult restorative, primarily your side of the practice. What, what are you excited about? I mean, as you go in Monday morning and the patient opens their mouth, um, you're practicing much different dentistry than you did five years, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, just like I, that I am. What, what motivates and excites you about what you can offer your patients today that you didn't in the past? You know, I, I think, you know, part of it is that always having a philosophy of being minimally invasive, I think that I'm changing the way I prepare teeth, even for operative dentistry. I'm, you know, we're doing tunnel preps are getting sexy again, and slot yeah. preps are getting sexy again. Mm -hmm. As the new and sexy is good. Yeah, sexy yeah. is great. And as the new restorative materials are out there now, the so-called bioactive materials that are starting to shed some minerals onto the teeth and be able to remineralize or remineralize adjacent teeth, tunnel preps are going to work. So instead of mm -hmm. opening up a large, I mean, if it's large, it's large. But if it's an incipient class two. We're not dropping boxes so quickly anymore. Mm -hmm. We're doing a tunnel uh, and restoring it with a, a bioactive flowable composite like Activa from Pulp Dent, which is a glass mm -hmm. ionomer, or Shofu's right. um, composite and, uh, in those situations and seeing phenomenal results. So that's, that's kind of exciting, being able to keep things real small. I think it, it bodes, that, bodes patients well for the future because mm -hmm. you know, keeping things small, you're going to preserve and conserve tooth structure. And, you think those restorations should last a much longer period of time and the, and the teeth yeah. should stay intact. So that's that's always a fun thing, uh, I think, to do. Yeah, tooth banking. There you go. I mean, that's, you know, and people say, oh, materials are so different. You know, even if I even if I cut a full coverage crown, a patient comes in with an MOD amalgam and rogomesial buccal cusp off, right? We were all treatment planned to do a crown. Right. Cusp missing, do a crown, right? So even if someone said, well, I did a conservative crown, because now I can use zirconia at 0.5, Ten years from now, it's still going to be a freaking crown when it's cut off. There's you know? no question. And it should be an on-lay now, and it'll be an on-lay with better materials ten years from now. Or when there's a little bit of microleakage, you throw in some some bio or biomechanical material that'll right. go in and remineralize it. And, and, and Activa, and Activa shows a lot of promise in that in, in that respect. Activa's pulp dense 
resin-modified glass onomer that comes out of a syringe, and that's showing a lot of promise, and it has calcium phosphate and fluoride, and those are the building blocks of teeth. So that's yeah. that's kind of exciting a little bit. Yeah, and things are going to change. You know, it'd be nice if we get a restorative material, like a, something that we mill that's made out of that material. So we put a crown on and leeches, and, you know, we're not going to see recurrent decay around... You never know we'll what we're going to hear at Kerr at the KOL. Yeah, out that's there. right. So, so it, it might be in the works already. That's right. Well, probably is to some degree, right? right? Uh, so th speaking of sexy, you look sharp. Thank you. So Alan Miller, who is, is both our good friend, you know, I, I said, so what should Ron and I talk about beside the obvious of lasers and technology? He said, well, ask him how to look sharp because you're a very sharp dresser, you know, and you got to, you know, so let's talk a little bit about that. So, you know what? It's, it's funny. It, and here's an interesting story. And you, you remember Kirsten, who used to work for yes. her, correct? Yeah. So about three, about four years ago, five years ago, I was introduced to Kirsten at a Greater New York dental meeting. And for some reason, and I always pride myself on dressing nicely because I believe that, you know, if you're going to talk the talk, you got to walk the walk, and and you just got to look put together. And so I was introduced to Kirsten. It was my first introduction to Kirk. Kirsten used to work for Kirk. And for some reason that day I wore a bow tie. I never wear a bow tie. But <laughs> I don't know why I put a bow tie on that day, but I did. So I, I met Kirsten and she says, Hey, you look you look really good. I said, You look sharp. I'm like, Yeah, you know, I like I like, you know, my clothes and whatever. We went on, had a conversation. That was my first introduction to Kerr. Well, I didn't see Kirsten for about a year later. I was given a lecture in New York. We were sitting about ten of us um, at a dinner table and Dave Branch, who was running the program at the time, says to me, Ron, do you know Kirsten from Kerr? I said, yeah, we met before. She goes, I remember you. You're the guy with the bow tie. And that was a year later. And, and, and you know, I tell that story because, you know, people don't realize that people do pay attention, especially right. with what we do. We speak a lot in front of people and audiences. I can't tell you how often I get a comment back that lecture was great and you look good, too. And that happens constantly in these programs. And, and people realize that, you know, when you're put together, I think your message uh, is delivered smoother. I mean, you're always put together, and I know you like your clothes too. And, uh, I like clothes, uh, yes. and uh, and you know you don't have to go out and spend zillions of dollars. I, I might spend a little bit of money on my clothes because I like to, um, but there are some of our friends who show up and they're wearing the same jacket they wore for the last nine years and is tattered <laughs> and things like that. And they're good speakers, but you know what? It, it just they don't look the part. So I just think it's important yeah. to go out there and just be put together. Today it's easy for a lot of guys because if you can't do it. In every big department store, there's a personal shopper who'll go do it for you. Now, do you have a personal shopper? Do no, you? I do it myself. I have yeah. fun. I actually go to the stores when I'm not doing anything, and I'm looking for my stuff, and I rearrange the ties and the shirts because I just play with it. I'm, 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 <laughs> I, I, I'm, that's my hetero, uh, uh, you know, that in me. But I, I do that. You know, I just I have, that's I have a metro section. Like my metro, yes. yeah, that's my yeah. metro. But I, you know, I, so I have fun uh, doing it. And I have fun, you know, getting fun things to yeah. wear. So yeah. my wife it, thinks I'm a little crazy sometimes. But we well, are crazy. Maybe not about your clothes, but I, I'm sure she thinks you're crazy. But I think you're right. I think it's the image that we portray. Um, you know, as aesthetic dentists, as restorative dentists, as someone that whether you're teaching that or you're discussing with your patient. You know, and, and I don't know what you wear in your office, but you know, I think that you should look sharp. No your question. office should look sharp, and, and you know that that's really a calling card. Do you know what you're going to be? I used to wear scrubs years ago, and I got away from that because I don't think you look good in scrubs. Yeah. And I'm not really comfortable in a jacket and tie wearing, so usually I wear a Izod type shirt and nice khakis. But I'm always put together, and you know what? And the bottom line is, I'm comfortable, but they realize I'm not there in scrubs. And my biggest pet peeve is when I walk into an office and I see people in, in their scrubs. And what's worse is when the staff leave the office in scrubs. Because yes. we have that in the office. And I said, ladies, you can't walk out of the office in scrubs because there's dirt on those scrubs. And if you're going over to the, to the restaurant to pick up a, yeah. a sandwich for yeah, lunch. Starbucks it, it, or panini or that, something that's like that. That's not right? cool. It, it's just not cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, so we, we, I think it's important to look put together. I think it's, yeah. and we'll see a bunch of that when we. Oh, we'll see a bunch that aren't put together this weekend even. Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah, this is what I would wear. So, I, matter of fact, I saw a patient this morning. I put, I put a, a long you know, coat on, but, right. but you know, that's the image I think we need to portray, whatever, whatever our goals are, obviously. No question. Um, another fun thing, how's your restaurant doing? Ah, my restaurant, Tazina, is my little plug. Tazina in Forest Hills, Queens. Um, we're, as a matter of fact, I'm here at the round table and tomorrow night is our one year anniversary party. Oh, very cool. So, and you're going to miss it. I'm going to miss it. Yeah, okay. So I decided to venture at the restaurant business after figure I'd throw away some money because um, yeah. restaurants are a tough business to make money. My chef had a restaurant, a small restaurant, not too far away. We doubled the size. It's still not big. It's pretty intimate, about 50 seats. He didn't have a bar. We have a bar. He was a two-time uh, chop champion on the Food Network, losing in the third chopped episode of the dessert round. And uh, talented guy, Jason Zucas, makes modern Italian food. And, and if you look across at Tazina at our food ratings, 
We got four and a half stars on pretty much. How do you spell that? T A. I know people are right now. Hey, T A Z Z I N A, and it's in Forest Hills, Queens. And if you look at Open Table or Yelp, we have four and a half food stars. Four and a half stars. Um, so our food's good. How far that is that said, out of Manhattan? Uh, no traffic. 15 minutes traffic, 25 minutes, probably seven miles or eight oh, okay. miles. Not long, probably 15, 20 minutes from JFK. Uh, that all being said, it's a tough business to make money. Yeah. Yeah. We're not really making much money. I know we had a little bit of a tequila. You know, I'm a tequila. I have, I have about 90 bottles now. And so we had a little bit of conversation to tequilas before about yeah. tequilas and, and drinking. It's, oh, I'm glad you're doing well. I mean, you look great. And, Thank you. And uh, so, so what are you doing? So you're practicing, you're lecturing, and uh, you mentioned you're doing something kind of cool next year. Oh, yeah. So, you, yeah so that's pretty interesting. I was just asked to give a lecture. Um, next September, uh, anyone who's interested can go to travelandcruisepartners.com. We're doing a two-day Crown or one-day Crown & Bridge lecture on uh, a cruise ship leaving from Venice, returning to Venice on the Azamara cruise ship. I've been on that cruise line, and uh, it's a, about a 400-passenger cruise line, really high-end, high-service, and it's actually going to a place, some places that I personally really want to go to, which is Croatia. It's going to oh, yeah. some of the islands in Croatia. I've been to some, but I want to go to the others. It's going to Venice, and that should be fun. We're going to speak um, on Crown and Bridge on the day at sea, and otherwise have a lot of fun. That's okay. September 2016. So that's Are you the fun. only speaker? I'm the only speaker. Do, do, we, do you need another speaker? Uh, you, you can come along, no problem. <laughs> I'll sleep in the uh, little it'd, cruise quarters. It'd be great. We taxi. Um, yeah, that'd be a lot of fun. So if people want to get a hold of you, because I know you how many days a year are you speaking? Um, I probably speak about 20 to 25 times a year I'm on the road. Okay. Uh, so I'm still, I still have two offices, so it's, i got to juggle it, and it's still, yeah, still oh, yeah. pretty tough. That's because you make your living doing dentistry. I make my you life. have to pay for that restaurant somehow, there's, right? There's <laughs> no question about that, it's not paying for itself right now. Uh, yeah, if they want to get a hold of me, um, my website, uh, nylaserdentistry.com. Uh, my email is whiter, the word whiter, W-H-I. T E R T T H whiter teeth at aol.com. Okay. Uh, and I'm Good. always available for our emails. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, I, I know that a lot of our listeners and viewers, they're thinking, God, he knows all this stuff about all these cool things. And, and we barely got to touch on all those cool things. And there's all these other subjects we could have talked about. And they'd probably love to see you speak. Well, so great. they'll get a hold of you. Anything else you want to close up with? You know, we call this our treadmill podcast. Treadmill being 30, 35 minutes or uh -huh. in the city, your, your commute, right? So. You know, it's been about 35 minutes, so we got to wrap up. But let's, anything else you want to talk Anything you're excited about? Um, you know, here's the thing. I think that de we're, at, we're at a great forefront. We're at a great time in dentistry right now. Uh, a lot of dentists are stubborn in getting involved in technology, even stubborn in changing the way they do their crown and bridge. You know, I know, that I'm sure, um, here at Keating Lab, you guys do a lot more zirconia and Emacs now than, than ever before, oh, but yeah. still some dentists are stuck in their ways. I, I think it's just important to venture out there and, and just push the comfort level, whether it's technology or materials. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great things that we can do for our patients today, and it's an exciting time to be a dentist, yeah, and, yeah. and I'm happy to be be part of it. Yeah, it's very cool. It's it's hard to even envision that we wouldn't be dentists. Like people say, "Are you going to retire in ten years?" Like I hope not. Right. I mean, I want to be because it's just going to get better. It's going to get more fun and exciting. And you know, you and I that are, are at least keeping up with technology that we get to grow and evolve as all these cool things yeah. are, are happening. You know, talking about PFMs because we still do a lot of PFMs because we have doctors that have always done that, right? And, and they just don't want to change their ways. And, and I understand that. I, I accept that, except for you look at, well, let's take our KDZ Bruxer, which is our monolithic zirconia. You know, we're milling at 0.5 millimeters occlusal, which means you can't do a PFM. That's going to be a PFM with a metal occlusal, right? right? The accuracy with our seven, our seven axis mills, it's as accurate as metal. The porcelain, the zirconium is 10 times stronger than the porcelain in that PFM. So, you know, I'm trying to have them justify, oh, it's been around forever. And, and then, you know, I say, what do you think is the most expensive restoration that comes out of our laboratory? Oh, I don't know, Emacs maybe. No, first it's Gold Crown. Right. Second is a PFM. Third is Emacs and Empress. And then way down here, because we're milling all this, is the zirconia. So, you know, you just start looking at why are we still doing this? And, and you know, it's, it, it, a lot of it doesn't make sense to me. And I think what we've been trying to do as educators saying, you know what, look at this stuff because it's going to save you money. It's going to provide a better restoration for your patients. Fits better, looks better. There's, there's no question. You know what? And we can. Uh, I'll leave it with a little quote. My son's a college, Division three college wrestler, and one of his coaches, in getting them to um, really just fine tune their workouts and get stronger, used to say to them, "You know, if nothing changes, nothing changes." And that's really the bottom line. Yeah. You know, if you don't change what you're doing, you know, you're gonna get what you got. And uh, so it's it's a good time to start changing and shifting over to zirconia and Emacs and 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 modelless crowns and scanning, because yeah. that's where we're going. Yeah. You're
here. So thanks for being here. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Had a blast. We could have talked forever. It could have been a, a marathon run uh, podcast. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I as I did. Be sure to uh, contact Ron if you have any questions. You got his email address. Um, maybe all of us will be on the cruise next year coming out of Italy. That'd be, that'd be a blast. That'd be a lot of fun. Um, check out our other podcast, Dental Up, all, all one word, dot XYZ. We're also doing some very cool things with videos. Um, we just filmed two what I call David Talks, like TED Talks, on uh -huh. our whiteboard today. So we're having a lot of fun with it. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you're ever in the Southern California area, if you're in Disneyland, Laguna Beach, Newport, we're about seven miles from all those. So stop by Keating Dental Arts, and I'd love to host you. Have a great day.